Hi everyone, it's Kel from Women For One, and today on this beautiful spring day, I am interviewing U.S. Congressman Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan, um, what a neat guy. I am so excited to have spoken with him. In uh, He's from Ohio. He's a U.S. Congressman from Ohio, and in 2000, at the age of 27, he became one of the youngest state senators in Ohio history. And at 29, in 2003, he was sworn in as a U.S. Congressman. It was so beautiful to talk to him because it reinvigorated me um, about the United States and our political process after just kind of being jaded at a, as a 45-year-old mom, um, sit, U.S. citizen, seeing all the negative campaigning and the tearing down that politicians do. This man completely uplifted me with our conversation. He has written a book called A Mindful Nation, and I, I will have it on my site and feature it. And it, it it's a beautiful book regarding getting resources around teaching everyone from Marines, from parents to integrating it, uh, mindfulness into the education system in the United States. We talked about the definition of mindfulness. We talked about his future plans and we talked about how to inspire others. That's what we do here at Women for One. So I am really excited for you guys to hear this interview and I really thank you, Congressman Ryan. It was an amazing talk. Hey Kelly, Hi Congressman Ryan, how are you? Thank you so much for speaking with me. So we always start with this, and I actually, this question I wasn't going to start with <laughs> um, because I have so many questions for you about a mindful nation, but I thought it'd be really great to ask such a cutting edge politician like yourself this question. So how do you define the word authenticity in your life, in your world, and who are your models of authenticity? You know, obviously being your truest self, um, but, but operating from Absolutely. Really to, yeah, to check in with your inner calling. And I, I try to do that with Women For One. Every step I take, you know, you're the channel for it. You're not, I'm not Women For One. I just try to listen to my inner guidance. Do you do that in your own work with being a politician? Yeah, you, you know, you try the best you can. I think there's, <clears throat> there's levels of, um, you know, or a spectrum of, you know, how much of that, Right. Um, based on outside factors, sometimes you run into roadblocks or walls, and uh, and you have to figure out how to how to get around them. But the, the key is to stay, you know, keep keep the compass, staying in tune with the compass, so that you're you're moving in the right direction. There's a great scene in the movie Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Right. So 
as much as you want to keep going in that direction and keep following that, sometimes it's, you know, it's not linear. It's back and forth, and especially in politics, but in all personal relationships. So you maintain that connection the best you can and, and let that drive you. Mm-hmm. At the same time, you can't be firm. Sometimes you got to be Fle- soft. Flexible, right. Right. And flexible and nimble as you go. Absolutely. So can you tell our community, I, you know, I read your book, A Mindful Nation, but can you tell our community why you decided to write it and where your belief in mindfulness came from? Well, my, I had a personal uh, experience at a five-day silent, primarily silent retreat with John Kevin Zan in 2008. Mm-hmm. that you call it a quiet revolution that's a beautiful way of saying it because it all is about quieting your mind and simplicity but there are a a lot of science-based parts of this as well and I've spoken to a lot of people I mean Dr. Jill Bolte Taylor is you know it was a neuroscientist that had a stroke um, and she wrote that book my stroke of insight regarding how the amygdala works and I I, you know I read in your book um, about um, Goldie Hawn's mind up um, uh, in the schools. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing with the schools right now in the education system and how you're getting implementing them into the Ohio schools? Yeah, um, well, in 2008, uh, I was able to get a million dollar uh, a grant for two school districts in Ohio, Warren City School District and Youngstown City School District. 
Mm-hmm. And we, we brought in a social and emotional learning and mindfulness uh, curriculum that taught the kids um, mindfulness practices mm. and also taught them the social and emotional skills um, that they would need to really function in the world. And the curriculum is based on Dan Goldman's book, Emotional Intelligence. Mm-hmm. And really teaching kids how to live. I mean, you know, we... <laughs> we're, we're, we need to teach them math and science, and we need to teach them, you know, reading and writing. But it's becoming more apparent today that it's tough for a kid moving into the world if they don't have the social and emotional skills that they need, the ability to identify their own emotional state, their own state of mind, uh, show appreciation and compassion and empathy for others. Uh, emotional states that they may be in. Right. And it's been given them the, the, the tactics, the skill sets that they need to function in the world. And I think teaching them, you know, how to calm down their amygdala, how to, you know, engage their prefrontal cortex, how to, mm-hmm. um, you know, <clears throat> keep their nervous system balanced. And, and, and I always say, too, you know, I'm going to be 40, so I've been doing this for a little while. Um, I just am getting more and more convinced that most of us in our daily lives may use 10, 15, maybe 20% of the technical knowledge that we learned at school <laughs> or that that we need to function in our jobs. I mean, unless you're a scientist in a lab, um, you're, most of your success um, or in the world is we define it, um, is based on how you interact with other people, how you handle your own Mm -hmm. emotions, how you, are you a good listener, Um, are you a good problem solver, can you tap into your own creativity to solve problems, these are, most people would call them soft skills, but they're actually more essential than anything else. If you have a good idea, but everybody thinks you're a jerk because you never listen to anybody, then your good idea isn't going to go anywhere. Um, so you need all these other skills, and, and problems are so complicated today that you need teams of people to help solve them. So whether you're talking about the Cleveland Clinic or you know a great engineering firm, these are people who operate in teams. Mm-hmm. So... You need to develop, and we need to help kids develop those social and emotional skills. Do they listen? You know, right. do they have both their attention span? Um, and you know, particularly for for you, um, there's probably a lot of moms who um, I don't know, will know they are. And th- these techniques give kids the skills that parents want their kids to have. Right. And and hold your attention, um, you know, the ability to really, you know, stay in the present moment and not be daydreaming all the time. These are skills that I think most parents would want their kids to learn, whether you're a liberal or conservative or Democrat or Republican. You know, when you've got the average uh, teenage girl sending 6,000 text messages a month, then we better be doing something to help I so agree. I have six six teenagers right now. I have three of my own and three stepchildren. <laughs> and I I watch my children and, and, and my kids are like, Mom, I don't get like how to live in this world. They'll give me that feedback from school. You know, I learn it at home. I I learn it from you and, you know, my my husband and their dad. And I mean, they're not learning the skills. I mean, the education is very important, but I just hope that we can get something as a pilot into all the schools and all the education systems that will teach both the emotional and social skills you're talking about, especially because the children these days are, I mean, they're on their phones, their, you know, technology is just, I have to go, guys, look up, look at me, you know, focus, let's get present, let's go out in nature because of, you know, the the other side of things. So that's, it's wonderful that 
you're focusing on that. My question is like, how do you get that to be a pilot system for the whole country? I mean, I, I would love to see that all over the country. And how can you have that vision for the whole country? That's fabulous. And I just love how you, I mean, you know, you're from a very traditional American family and you know, you got your Catholic mainstream, you're an athlete, you're a man. Has that ever, I feel like that is really helped and you're a politician to move this into mainstream America. What do you say to the people like, Oh, this is kind of woo woo. This is Eastern philosophy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a strong believer in Eastern philosophy, but I do want to address that because how do you integrate it into mainstream? You talk about just the actual benefits of it instead of just talking about the woo-woo part. Do you know how some people talk about that part? Well, the people who talk about this as being woo-woo um, don't understand it, and I think haven't taken a real good look. It may be a knee-jerk reaction mm -hmm. that this is, this is somehow... Odd, but when when the United States Marine Corps uh, 
is implementing this as a part of their the training um, for every every marine. Um, when when corporations like Google and General Mills and Target and Procter and Gamble and these kind of companies are are doing the same thing, then it's really hard to say this is somehow woo woo. Um, it seems it's already mainstream. And when you look at the brain science and how you can literally change the shape of your brain um, into directions that are more beneficial, that make you feel better, that cultivate your attention span, that allow you to be more empathetic, these are uh, these are mainstream techniques backed up by science and implemented by. You know, organizations like the United States Marine Corps. Right. Uh, that's not, you know, baseball, apple pie, and Chevrolet. And <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what is. And so, uh, to me, and, and that's I think part of my role in the world is that yeah, I, you know, played football. I was the you know quarterback in my high school football team. I got a college scholarship. I, I'm from Northeast Ohio. You know, right. I, Um, in that sense and um, and I thought how this helped me and I wanted to share it I mean you can't you can't taste this you can't realize that you can as an athlete realize that you can maybe train your mind to be in the zone and not want to share that with your friends who have or two or three kids and are you know living paycheck to paycheck Mm -hmm. and having a lot of
Oh, that's beautiful. And I was just, you know, you know, you, you, you touch, it touches you because we're both human beings. We've got more in common than we have not in common. And um, it's a beautiful thing. It is. And, you know, if we're teaching our children, they are our future leaders for the whole world. And, you know, it has to start with them. That's it's wonderful what you're, what you're yeah, doing. And, and, if, and if we're going to change the neighborhoods, then we got to change the schools. Right. So you com- you combine this with, um, uh, a, a, let's say, um, for example, any part of my larger agenda would be the edible classrooms, you know, for fresh and healthy food, and then urban gardens and urban farming, so that in the summer these kids are working together in nice. in urban farms, and you know, then there's summer jobs for the kids. You you can see how you can begin to connect. Absolutely. And that's the future for us. If we're going to have a future in America, it's going to be it's going to be by us connecting these kids, and we can do that through social emotional learning, do it through mindfulness, and then have these alternative programs that keep them connected. That, that's it. Okay, so I have one last question, and I just if you had a, a piece of advice for our community, my the demographics for women for one, um, we have almost a a 5 million reach and uh, we have worldwide the women um, I have a very specific demographic that's following Women for One from actually the Middle East ages 18 to 24 and then in in the Western countries um, I have ages 40 to 55 moms suburban moms women that are working um, single moms so that's kind of my demographic. So if you had one piece of wisdom that was aligned with your message, what would you say to them? Um, I would say give mindfulness a, a, a chance. I would say give it a try. And for a week or two, yourself. And see if it, see if it helps you. If it does, you know, you may want to learn more about it, teach it to your kids, promote it out to your community in some way that you would think is beneficial. If it's not, you know, you can go find something else. Right. But I would say give a practice of mindfulness a chance because when you look at the science and you look at who's doing it and how many people are saying, boy, it really benefited me, give it a chance and, and, and for yourself. You know, if you're not okay, you're going to throw your anxiety onto your kids, and you may not mm-hmm. even know it. Right. Um, so give it a shot. I have to say one last story. Part of the um, uh, curriculum at, at our school is uh, having parents involved and, and having a parental, like, four sessions with parents. Mm-hmm.
absolutely. Really and I, I so appreciate everything you're doing. It's just, I, it, it gives me a new beautiful perspective of politics. You know, when you're bombarded with a lot of the negativity during the campaign times, and it's just really inspiring to hear a politician like you. And I really, I wish you well, and thank you so much for your time. Um, I do want to say um, you can find your book, A Mindful Nation, on Amazon, and then also, um, it's. It, can you tell the website, mindfulnation.org? Is that it? Yeah, yeah, mindfulnation.org. Okay, thank you so much again, Congressman Ryan. Yeah, you got it. Let's stay in touch because, you know, I, I want this not to be on me or anybody else, just like a one off. Um, you know, an interview. I mean, we wanna we wanna build this out, and you know, maybe at some point, absolutely, you can have you can have a link or um, resource section, you know, on your website that can help facilitate some of this. Absolutely. If you're in the in the in the um, you know getting hooked up with the, the mindfulness magazine people. I think it could be a great kind of relationship where you mutually beneficial um, for you guys to at least be connected. Uh, and and that they are they're they're the stories you know that that uh, are transforming the world. Well, I'll and definitely connect with them, and I exciting. yeah, and I'm happy to put a link, especially I mean to your website on on as a resource on my website. I would love to, and I, we will stay in touch, and let's keep this quiet revolution going. There you go. Thank, Terrific. thank you. Take Have care. A great day. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye.